All right, Chicago, we are back. And it's time for us to return to where we belong, the conference finals with your Chicago Blackhawks. And look at the team that we're going up against, the Arizona Coyotes. 32 regulation losses on the year. Might be a team that we can, uh, we can simulate well against, but... On the flip side, if they're here in the Western Conference Final, perhaps they simulate quite well in the real-time simulation compared to the regular season. But I feel like this is our year. We have a good opponent here in the Conference Final, and in rounds one and two, I mean, there was adversity, certainly, but we came through in both of, uh, both of the series. First round, it was the Edmonton Oilers, and you know I was I was scared shitless because Sergei Bobrovsky was not playing like a 92 overall goaltender until Game Four, four overtimes, and it seemed like that was the the moment in the playoffs that we needed where we turned everything around. Sergei essentially had a shutout. It was four overtimes, right? So he had a shutout in that game, got us the victory, and then he just turned it on. One goal against, two goals against, one late, and that put us off to round two up against the Dallas Stars where he was absolutely fantastic. Sergei Bobrovsky is the reason we're going to the Western Conference Final. The offense, it was there enough. I wish it was there a little bit more, but I mean, look at this. Two goals, four Dallas in a loss, so Sergey had a good game right there, one goal against, two goals against in a victory, two goals against in a loss, so he's staying consistent, two goals against in a victory, and finally our offense came through with five goals right there. His one bad game where he allowed three, and then game seven, yes it was Patrick Kane that sniped at glove side, but Sergey Bobrovsky one goal against the entire period and got it in overtime, and it was the second OT as well, right? So Sergey, thank you very much, Patrick Kane, thank you very much doing his best to tie Sidney Crosby with four Stanley Cups I know in real life Crosby's only got three but in this universe year one Winnipeg won the cup year two Pittsburgh won the cup so Crosby's got four and also I think uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins yeah they're facing off against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Eastern Conference final I was reading your comments apparently and this is true when Pittsburgh goes to the finals they go back to back if you remember in the 90s with Lemieux and Yager it was back to back then 08 09 with Crosby and Malkin the first time around then it was what was a 14 15 or 15 16 or 16, 17, one of those two. Uh, recently, right, they went back to back and they won it both. So now, if they won the Stanley Cup last year and got back after Washington and Winnipeg won, are they due for another appearance in the Cup Final this season? And that would be fantastic, man. Kane, four time. Taves, four time. Keith, four time. Up against Malkin and, uh, and, uh, what's it called? No, the three time for the uh, Chicago players and up against Malkin and uh, Crosby, four time Stanley Cup champions. Just a star studded final. But we can't make the mistake of looking past our opponents here in the Western Conference final, the Arizona Coyotes. So let's do our due diligence, see what we're going up against, see what their strengths are. Seems like Clayton Clutch Keller do not have him uncovered. In 12 games so far in the playoffs, he's got 12 points and their top line is a plus two. What do you do during the regular season? All right, so this is year three. He should be, yeah, he should be playing pretty well. Let's see his defensive stats. He might just not have someone on that line to really help him out. You know what? Yeah, he's going to get a lot better. 84 overall. I'd say he's better than 84 overall, but he hasn't hit his highest peak just yet. 22. It's probably only a year or two away. I mean, we're in year three. So Clayton Keller, Alex Galchenyuk, and Brendan Pierlini. All right, so Pierlini's a little bit weak there. Uh, Alex Galchenyuk during the regular season. Hang on one second. Let me see what kind of numbers he puts up. 62 points, more of a playmaker. So both Cl uh, Keller and Galchenyuk are both uh, playmakers. What about Brendan Pierlini? Uh, he's kind of a shooter, but he gets assists as well. All right, so don't exactly know this team. Don't have their players uncovered fully. Um... But against the Edmonton Oilers with McDavid on the first line and against Dallas with Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan on the first line, uh, you can make the argument this is the weakest first line that we face so far in the playoffs. Don't know what they can bring defensively, but offensively I'm not impressed. Second line, you got Derek Stepan, uh, Dylan Strom, who should be on our team, damn it, 84 overall. Let's see what kind of numbers he's putting up. Uh, 51 points. All right, so they might just have a, a nice little deep team here. Uh, Christian Fisher, I know he's good defensively. All right, pretty good second line. I'll give it to them. They, yeah, it looks like they have some nice depth. Uh, Michael Grabner, Christian Dvorak, and uh, Vinny... Hino Stroza. All right, so Dvorak is a third-line center. Pretty good. Grabner and Hino Stroza. 
I don't know, but it might actually work out because you got a two-way forward sniper and playmaker, I believe. So watch out for that third line. And then the fourth line, you got Lawson Kraus, Nick Merkley, and Laurent Dauphin. All right, so 76, 76, 73. Don't have them fully uncovered just yet, so we can't tell. Uh, but I'm not impressed with this lineup. They might be able to keep the puck out of the net, but uh, offensively, I don't know where they're going to get their goals from. The, on the blue line, you got Alex Goligoski, uh, Jacob Tachurin. All right, so Goligoski is that offensive defenseman who might be able to help out on the power play. Uh, Tachurin up at 88 overall. Looks like he's developed quite nicely for them. Interesting that their captain, Oliver ekman Larson has been replaced by Goligoski on the first line. You got to think that this is the man getting all the goals during the regular, or he had goals. I mean, he's a 20-goal man, 59-point player, and he's being replaced on the first line with Goligoski. So I guess they're going for some depth. I guess you don't want to put Ekman, Larson, and Chichurin together because then you have to go Goligoski and Demir. That wouldn't even be that bad. But again, you know what? It's working out for them. They've got eight wins in the playoffs so far. All they need is eight more. Oli Uholivi traded to the uh, Arizona Coyotes from Vancouver. And uh, Joachim Ryan. Was he on my team? Yeah, he was on our team, wasn't he? It's been a long time, man. Got to get going with this series again. Uh, but I do believe we had Joachim Ryan in year number one or two. Okay, so that is that taken care of. Goaltenders, uh, we have Antti Aranta, 84 overall, and Darcy Kemper. All right, so we certainly had the advantage in net. Although, look at Ranta's save percentage, 930. That's exactly the same as Sergei Bobrovsky. But Bobrovsky had that bad first round. Perhaps uh, Ranta has been a little bit more consistent. So when I look at their team, the uh, if I have to give them an advantage, their strength the ability to keep the puck out of the net. Ranta, that 930 save percentage, they had a lot of those good two-way forwards, so their penalty kill should look good. Uh, Chichurin, they had a, they had a, yeah, they had some d depth on the blue line, and their bottom six actually might not be that bad. But where are they going to get their offense from? So if it's a defensive uh, struggle, I mean, we got Sergei Bobrovsky to keep the puck out of the net, and we have all the weapons up front compared to their team to really put the puck home. I mean, Panarin, to bring Kitten Kane, that just smokes their first line. They don't have a guy like Patrick Kane. All right, they don't have a guy like McDavid or uh, or Jamie Benn, the 90-plus overall player that can just tear it up. He's got six goals in 13 games. Nah, none bigger than that uh, overtime winner in Game 7. Oh, my God. Game 7 overtime against Dallas. Now, the second line, Nemesnikov, Taves, and Bjorkstrand, more of a defensive line, but they actually came alive in Round 2 against Dallas. Bjorkstrand can score some goals, and Taves are... Yeah, he's got five goals as well, only one less than uh, Patrick Kane. So that second line I'm really liking. Third line, they're they're staying in there just because they were the T, uh, the line that got the the what was it, the fourth overtime goal in Game Four against uh, the Edmonton Oilers in Round One. And I was reading some comments, and some people were saying to move the fourth line up to the third line, but uh, they they're playing so well right now. This fourth line, I don't want to touch a thing. Jackson Kostopoulos, the rookie, his first NHL game was a playoff game. Eleven games so far for us, two goals, five assists, and he's a plus six. This is what I mean. Smith. 13 games, 7 points, a plus 5, and Miles Wood, a minus 1, but uh, he was on that third line. Ever since I moved him down to the fourth line, that's when that line really came together, along with Kostopoulos. Uh, defensively, Tyler Myers with Bockfist, that really helped us out. Ekholm with Yoko Harju, and then Duncan Keith helping out Santini down there. But uh, here's the man, Sergei Bobrovsky, a 930 save percentage. It was at 840 at uh, the end of uh, Game 3 against the Edmonton Oilers, so he really did turn it around. So enough uh, enough talking, enough wasting time. We know our options. I can always move that fourth line up to the third line if we need um, if we need to change it up. I have Yarncroc on the bench. I have, uh, who else do I have on the bench? There was another two-way forward on the bench. So somebody else on the bench. So there's a lot of different changes that we can make to that third line, but uh, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, and Duncan Keith, now's the time to really show up. Uh, year one, we made the playoffs, got swept out in four games. Year two, we made it to the second round with two victories, six wins in the playoffs. Year three, we're in the third round. So we've already built upon it, but we have a lot of young players on this team. They're going to be looking towards our veterans, the guys who have been here before. Kane, Taves, Keith, let's go. Home ice advantage, Western Conference final. It's underway, ladies and gentlemen. It is in the hands of the gods now. There's not much more I can do. And an early goal for Clayton Clutch Keller. Now, I said the inability to score for the Arizona Coyotes, but perhaps uh, Keller and uh, Galchenyuk and Pirlini can just tear it up. 
All right, so one goal, but we were able to stop it after that. They didn't just pile it on in the first period. All right, this is a game here. Now, their strength, the ability to keep the puck out of the net. I'm hoping that they're not uh, a team like Dallas that we just faced. Ah, give me some games where we can get three goals by the end of regulation, please. Second period, underway. And there it is, Oliver Bjorkstrand, second liner, going to open up the goal scoring for Chicago. But the fourth line, Laurent Dauphin, reclaiming the lead for the Arizona Coyotes. But Bjorkstrand, for the second time in the game, in the second period, ties it up. Unbelievable. Big time goals right there. We're halfway through the game. It's very even. 20 shots to 17 in favor of Arizona, but the score is tied 2-2. Two to two. No longer. Yeah, that's second line. Ever since the Dallas series, the second line has really stepped up. And even Matthias Ekholm, second line uh, pairing, getting a goal for us. Alright, so if we can score on these guys, if we can give Sergei Bobrovsky three goals by the end of regulation, I mean, we got four, but if we can give him three by the end of reg consistently, I mean, he's too good. He's going to come through for us. So we have the routine in place. Uh, this game is certainly not over. Bobrovsky, any goalie can get scored two goals on. Once you get it to three, though, that's getting a little far. Power play, oh man, could have given him that insurance on front of our fans here in Chicago. We haven't been great on home ice in, during these playoffs, so come on. We've had home ice advantage each time, haven't been able to take advantage of it, but it looks like Sergei Bobrovsky, yeah, he's going to be too clutch for us here at the end of the period two minutes left and there that's all she wrote for game number one so that's exactly the kind of game that I want Bobrovsky will keep it two or less and then the offense three or more boom all right that's perfect don't need a shutout don't need five goals all we need is our boys to step up a big time second period right there second line chipping in for uh three goals they might have even chipped in for uh four goals right there let's take a look at these these stats. Yeah, Ekholm, 3.9 for Matias Ekholm. Nemesnikov, there it is. No more uh, Nemestankhanov. It's Nemesnikov when he's playing like this. Bjorkstrand and Taves, only one point, but a plus three. Yeah, that second line is great for us. That Bjorkstrand trade, man. Brandon Saad just uh, wasn't getting it done. Too many two-way forwards. And we had Nemestikov as like a playmaker. Jonathan Taves is that shutdown guy. Just got to find a shooter. And uh, Bjorkstrand can hit as well. So it's a very good defensive second line that can also score some goals now. So our top six, I'm loving it. So game two, let's just get right into it, man. Sergei Bobrovsky, ever since that fourth overtime victory, he has been playing great. Another game, only two goals against. All right, another early goal, though, for the Arizona Coyotes. For the second game in a row, they are the team that's going to open up the goal scoring. Let me take off my sweater here. It's getting a little hot. I'm getting excited. All right, so seven minutes left. Shots kind of low. No power plays to start the game. And there it is. Jonathan Taves again. So the second line so far has tied up uh, tied up games again. I was just about to say three times, four times now in the first four periods, the second line has tied up the game for us. Beautiful goal scoring. So Sergei Bobrovsky letting in some goals. But if, if we can score like this, if this is an example of a team that we can score on, on, they don't stand a chance because Sergey, just like the Edmonton series, he will come around eventually. All right, yeah, Dvorak. All right, so it's a bad game for Sergey Bobrovsky. If he allows three, you know it's a bad game. But he's not going to have a lot of these bad games. No way, no how. I'm paying him the big money for a reason. Now the question is, can we get another goal for him? Did we? We don't. We don't deserve to be winning games if we're allowing this many goals. But still, offense. Do you have some firepower left in you? The second line already tied it up four times in this series. Can you tie it up for a fifth time? Come on. Come on, boys. I don't want this series to be tied up. Give us that home ice advantage. That extra that we need. The fans are chanting. Listen to them. Get pumped up. Put the puck on the net. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. And Ranta is going to do a fantastic job. Shutting the door. 29 shots. 27 saves. A beautiful job right there. All right, Chicago. Let's see. Who, uh, was there any bad lines? Anyone that was like a minus three? Nemestikov, again, that second line's doing great. Panarin. So the first line, all right. So the first line, I'm not gonna, not gonna change that first line. You gotta think that they'll turn it around themselves. But the first line, not, uh, playing great that game. Not getting a single point so far. The first line. And also, minus in that game. All right, so a 1-1 one, one series tie. All right, so Bobrovsky gave us one good game, but he allowed three. So we're still, like, we haven't been screwed over just yet. Could you just get one bad game out of the way? Whatever. All right. It sucks when he gives you a good game and you lose. You know, he gives you two goals against and you only score one or you get shut out. So, whatever. They got three. We got two. Put it behind us. It's a 1-1 one, one series tie. Back to Arizona. We can get away from our media. Come on, boys. There it is. Jonathan Taves. Johnny Serious. I keep on talking about freaking Patrick Kane wants to get back. This man wants to get back. 
Taser, man. He wants to remain on that top 100 players list. Screw Gino Malkin. <laughs> Oh boys, I know that's that's robbery. Malkin should be there, but that's a that's a topic for another video. All right, so coming to the end of the first period here, and we have a one-one tie. So neither team, except for uh, in game one where we had that crazy second period, neither team is really taken off here. You know, a goal, uh, a tie, a, a goal, a tie. Yeah, we can't really pull away from these guys. Dylan Strom scoring on the team he should be on. All right, uh, shots thirteen eight. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I'm just. I'm getting all worried I'm going to be skipping something. All right, second period underway. Come on now, Chicago. We are out shooting them. We are really pouring on the shots. I mean, Ranta, he's 84 overall. That's good enough. I've seen goaltenders rob it, but come on. Sergey Bobrovsky's 90 overall. So as long as I get the goaltender who plays better, I mean, we, that's all the advantage that we need, right? We have everything else. We have the blue line. We have the offense. And we really need the offense to come through now. This is two games. The last game, what do we have? What, two goals for? This game, one goal, four going into the third period. I wanted three by the end of regulation. It seems like the Arizona Coyotes are a good defensive team here. We're feeling it. We're fe we felt it in game two. We're feeling it here in game three. Sergey Bobrovsky, you're going to have to play great. 30 shots to 19, essentially. Oh, my God. And Lauren Thoffin on the fourth line is going to put Arizona up. See, this is what I mean. We can't have games like this. Sergey Bobrovsky just played great. And we're not going to get a goal. We're not going to get a goal for... Oh, my goodness. All right. We're in trouble. That's fun. Now we're in trouble because Sergey just gave us a good game and we couldn't get the victory. So he's given us two good games out of three. He's already... he He's he's pulling his weight. Fourth line, Jackson Kostopoulos. All right. All right. So we are... We're in trouble. We are in trouble. I don't want to attempt going down 3-1. I think we need to make a line change. The first line ain't getting it done. The, th the second line is certainly getting it done. Hang on a second. Let me simulate up to the next one. Game four in Arizona, the Coyotes. We cannot lose to the Coyotes on our trip back to the Stanley Cup final. Come on. All right, so what we're going to do is we need some more offense. What I'm going to first do is, yep, we're going to move up the third line to the fourth, or the fourth line to the third. I know I had uh, the fourth line that just had a minus game, but uh, I trust them still. They're still... Yeah, Jackson Kostopoulos can still be trusted. The second line's doing great. First line is going to come alive. They're going to come alive. I trust them. But the third line, Jimmy VC, let's see, minus three. Schmaltz is on minus six. And we got Hayden at A+. plus. All right, so Schmaltz and VC. So VC's the one coming out. I'm going to switch up VC for McGinn or Yarncroft. Get another sniper in there. Now, Yarncroft was a minus three, but I could use... I need some more offense. So, yeah, I'm going to throw Yarncroft in there. We'll see if that can help out uh, some fourth-line offense for us. John Hayden, you can play the left side. Yarncroft back on the fourth-line right-wing position. If we have a game now where we allow too much, I'm going to switch back to uh, Brock McGinn. We just we need to change up something here because it's just the, the sim. We're just not scoring goals. Uh, defensively, I'm not going to change anything. Let me just check out the special teams. Duncan Keith. You know what? I'm going to take Duncan Keith off the first line power play now. Yeah, he's just, he's not getting it done. So Yoka Harju, you're going to go in there. So we're going to go Bockfist and Yoka Harju both. And then Ekholm, and we're going to go Tyler Myers, all right? There you go, Tyler Myers. Boom, get your ass in there. All right, so Ekholm and Myers, we're going to leave that second line power play the way it is. Four-man power play, same thing, Yoka Harju and uh, Myers. Let me get him in there. Boom. Very good. To bring Kane, Taze, and Panarin. Uh, penalty kill now. Uh, Taze, we're playing good defensively. Yeah, I don't need to change this up. So, yeah, yeah, that's all good. I was making sure that Yarncroft wasn't on the... Uh, when I changed him out, he wasn't killing penalties. And Sergei Bobrovsky, a 9-2-8. I mean, he's playing... No, I'm not blaming Sergei. I'm not blaming Sergei. He's had two good games out of three. I'm blaming the offense, the lack of offense. Patrick Kane, ever since scoring that overtime clincher in Game 7 against Dallas... Uh, that first line has been nowhere to be found. The second line has been great. Can't blame our captain. Can't blame uh, uh, Nemesnikov. And cannot blame Bjorkstrand. But uh, first line, we need you to start chipping in. All right, so we have three goals for Sergei Bobrovsky in the last two games. I want three by the end of regulation here in game number four. Let's go offense. In Arizona. Don't want to fall down 3-1. That would not be good. Let's get this series tied up and reclaim home ice advantage. Real-time simulation on fucking hell. Alex Galchenyuk's going to score second shot of the game. Oh, my God. See, Sergey gave us a good game. The last one, he could easily have a bad game now. And if he doesn't have a bad game this one, he could have the bad game in the next one. <sighs> he could give us a good game here. We could lose again. Where the fuck is the offense, man? Friggin' Ranta. Ranta's friggin' stoning us. Oh, my God. 13 shots to 10 in favor of the Blackhawks. Yet the score, again, in favor of Arizona. Same as the last game. We outplayed them. 
Cannot score a goal. 15 shots. Nothing. And there it is. The second line. The only line that is scoring here against Arizona. Jonathan Taves. The captain doing everything in his power to try to lead his team back to the Stanley Cup Final. I mean, he's leading by example as well. He's not even opening his mouth. He's just getting out there and, come on, boys, follow me. Come on, help us out. So here it is again. Sergei Bobrovsky, even though he allowed that early goal, and what, once again, the second line ties it up like for the sixth or seventh time in this series. Uh, but once again, Sergei Bobrovsky is giving us a good game. The offense is letting us down. So, I mean, if, if we lose this one, that's three good games out of four for Sergei, and we're down 3-1. That's going to be, that's, that's all she wrote, because he's going to be due for a bad one. Oh my god, boys, this is a must win. This is a must win. Kane, it's time to step up. Duncan Keith, I've demoted you, but you can still chip in. I'm not saying a damn thing to Jonathan Taste. Patrick Kane, get Panarin and the Brink hit playing, alright? Come on. Start freaking being stealth out there. Yarn Crook, what a coaching change! Unbelievable coaching decision right there by GM Superb, man. To get a little offense on the fourth line. They forget about him. He's pumped up that he gets the chance. He comes in, and is that going to be the game winner? John Dean, oh, the fourth line! What a freak! Oh, beautiful! And Jackson Kostopoulos, baby! Yes! Yes! Way to help out your goaltender. What a coaching decision. So after I put in Yarn Croc and move Hayden to the left side, they contribute for the game winner and the insurance marker. And then the fourth line, moving up to the third line, they get themselves the empty netter. Whew. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're back in it. All right. The series is back on. What about the, uh, the Eastern Conference? 2-2 two -two over there as well. Yeah, the, the, the final four here in the NHL. They, they match up well against one another. Uh, any one of these teams deserves to be in the Stanley Cup Final. I just I can't stand the fact or the idea of losing to the Arizona Coyotes, a team that had 36 losses on the year. I mean, we had uh, 33, but only 23 regulation losses. We just lost in three-on-three -three overtime and or to shoot out a lot. All right? I mean, we could get to overtime. They lost 32 times in regulation. So let's beat them in regulation, just like that last game, all right? So Sergey has now given us three out of four good games. He's due for a bad one. But at least now we're only two games away, all right? So, I mean, we're, we're in this series. And Patrick Kane, you got to think, that first line, you got to think is going to show up eventually, right? Right? Uh, Lord Dauphin, he's going to get the first shot of the game in again. Like, it was the second shot in the last game. It was the first shot in this game. God damn it. I don't want to blame Sergei Bobrovsky. He always pulls it together. It's just such a ball buster to always be down in the game. And we need, yes, the third line. Jackson Kostopoulos, Craig Smith, baby. Good job, boys. Way to go. All right, I forgot who who else is on that line. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh, you know what? I got to remember now. Hang on. Jackson Kostopoulos. I don't want to have any uh, kind of nonsense. Jackson Kostopoulos, Craig Smith, and who? No, not VC. It's not McGinn. Oh, shit. Who was it? Oh, my God. I, you know what? I completely forget. I'm going to have to look at that afterwards. <laughs> God damn it. All right, second period. Oh, man. Hopefully he uh, doesn't take that the wrong way. Nick Schmaltz, that's the one. <laughs> He reacts the right way. Right. I was thinking that Smith was the uh, the center. No, Schmaltz is the center. Smith is on the left side. Beautiful job, Nick Schmaltz. Oh. No, wait. Nick Schmaltz is the third line. He's on the fourth line. Now, fuck. I still forget the guy. Well, whatever. The fourth line chipped in. Yarn Croc might have had an assist right there. I'm all over the place, boys. All these line changes. I can't keep up. But it doesn't matter. Because Sergei Bobrovsky, once again, allows the early goal, but now has turned it on. And the Chicago Blackhawks have given him two goals. Now, I want the third by the end of regulation but Sergey you could just you could you could give me the greatest gift right here and just not let them score anymore give us two chances to win please Sergey please Sergey and please Patrick Kane can we go a whole freaking series though Patrick Kane getting a goal or Debrinkit or Panarin power play for Chicago goes nowhere we've got to get Kaner going man 10 minutes left can Sergey Bobrovsky the raging Russian do it I'll give you all the vodka in the world my man four three Two, one, yeah! Sergey Bobrovsky, he was worth every freaking penny, all right? that That's what, that's uh, four out of five games now. He has been unbelievable for us. Uh, Chicago stats, hang on a second. I got to see who this center is. Uh, Yokoharju, Miles Wood, there you go. I'm sorry, Miles Wood. Plus two as well. Thank you, Miles Wood. All right, so... <laughs> Good, uh, good uh, production right there. Jackson Kostopoulos, he had a... <coughs> oh, shit. You know what? Hang on. I need a drink. I won't uh, cut the video up. You know what? I won't even leave this screen, so you know I can't screw around with it. So hang on. Oh, my God. There you go. 
All right. I ain't messing with anything, boys. I ain't messing with anything. So let's continue. So Jackson Kostopoulos has a goal and an assist in his last two games. Sergey Bobrov, I mean, look at what Sergey's been able to do for us, man. We could have had the Series 1 already if the offense played as good as our goaltending. All right. So everything worked out in Game 1. Game 2, Sergey played great. Two goals against. Oh, it was the third goal. Wait, was that... Uh... Oh, was that one bad game? Yeah, okay, we'll just, that was the one bad game. Was that What, what was the third goal again? I forget. I'm trying to remember. All right, so we'll say Sergey had that one bad game. Fine. But uh, two goals against, and that's a loss. One goal against, one goal against. He's allowed four goals in the last three games. All right, so the offense. Come on, boys. All right, Sergey, he, now he is due. This is, this is usually, like, I've been watching hockey a long time. The elimination game, once a team gets to the brink of elimination, a game six on the road with the other team is usually like not only a win for the other team, but a domination, like a 6 nothing victory. And then we, we step up again in game number seven. But uh, this one to me... In Arizona, smells like a 5-2 victory for Arizona. You know what I mean? It just does. It just it has it written all over it. Now, I don't want to I'm not telling this to my players. I'm just thinking it. And <laughs> you guys the fans, you're not going to tell the players, right? But uh it just it feels like it. It feels like we could have a bad one. But maybe Patrick Kane goes off and gets a hat trick. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the chance to win the Western Conference final and get back to the Stanley Cup final in Arizona, game 6. Let's not let an early one in and get three by the end of regulation. Please. All right, so two shots by Arizona, three shots, no goals. Good, good so far. Ten minutes into the first period, and we have a tie game. Shots are tied as well, seven to seven, eight to seven. Four minutes left, three minutes left. Both teams, both goaltenders playing very well. You got to imagine those shots from the perimeter. You know, neither team wants to give up the big play just yet. So that's good. That's a good start. I might have been wrong in my prediction. Second period underway. Come on, Jonathan Taves. You've been so great. This is your series. You'll be remembered. Nick Schmaltz. There it is. There it is. Fourth line. Alex Dabrinkit. Yes, boys. Back to back. And the first line finally comes alive. That's exactly what we needed for Sergey. Oh, my. I love you. I love you love all of you. I love you all. You're coming through with the offense when we need it. And Sergey's Sergey. I mean, he's not, you know, fuck having a bad game. He already had one. It was game two. He allowed three. That's his bad game. Now he had uh, a three goal lead in the third period. That's all she wrote. We got Sergey Bobrovsky in the net. There's no freaking way he allows three. And we're, we could still get some more goals. We're going back to the Western Conference Final. We're going back to the Western Conference Final. Cal Yarncroft, ever since getting right back in there. Turning the series around. Yeah, yeah, Fisher. You can try to score all you want. It doesn't matter, boys. We're going back to the Stanley Cup final again. So, Chicago fans, you are welcome. And uh, let's watch a little Selly, shall we? Oh, yeah, baby. In Arizona, I don't care if it's on the road. I'll take it. And I want to watch this celebration as we have a face-off at center ice. What a season for the Arizona Coyotes. But once again, just like 2012, they come up. Oh, am I playing? I, I picked a computer game, damn it. All right, looks like I'm on the ice, boys. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. I'll just finish it off. And then true broadcast view as well. This should be interesting. How do I even take a face-off in true broadcast? Face-off won by Arizona. But just like 2012, the Arizona Coyotes, they're not going to be able to get to that Stanley Cup final. But a great season. A young team as well. Guys like Clayton Keller. But Sergei Bobrovsky. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? That's going to go in? Oh, Yoka Harju. What was that? I pass it out to him. Sergei's just like, all right, let's just kill the two. What happened? I... Did I pass it back because I was trying to spam it with Bobrovsky? Did I hit right trigger too many times? Oh, the white out. Oh, there's a chance. There's maybe a chance. Jeez, man. I thought I put in... That, that's going to hurt Sergey Bobrovsky's cons my chances. I thought I put in a computer game. Oh, my God. But it doesn't matter, baby, because Sergey Bobrovsky with his AHL helmet and the Chicago Blackhawks are going back to the Stanley Cup Final boys, 2000 and uh, hang on a second. Uh, let's see, 19 is year one, 20 year two, 21. So 2021, 2015, 2013, and 2010. In the last 11 years, we've been there four freaking times. They're three for three. Can we make it four for four? And there he is, Johnny Serious. What a series! I ain't touching that. Get out of here, Gary Bettman. Are you taking slim fast? Give me a freaking break. Unbelievable. Unbelievable round for Jonathan Taves. Somebody go back and uh, figure out how many goals he had. I don't even know if I can... 
to count how many points he had, but unbelievable performance there by our captain. The first line wasn't there, but you know what? It's a team effort in the playoffs, isn't it, boys? Patrick Kane was the one who got us to the Western Conference Final with that Game 7 overtime winner. And uh, he needed a little help here in the Western Conference Final. And he got it from his line mate that he's also won three Stanley Cups with, Jonathan Taves, really captain that second line. And, uh, you know, it's all coming together. Hopefully, in, in a perfect world, you know, now the, the first line wakes up against whoever we have in the next series. The second line continues to go forward. Yarncroc on the fourth line seems to be uh, stepping up. And we turn the old fourth line into the new third line with Jackson Kostopoulos in there. So it's beautiful. It's all working out, boys. And who are we going up against? You know what? I won't even look at it. Hang on. Simulate day. Let's go up a few days. NHL playoff round is complete. Who do we have in the Stanley Cup final? Oh, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. Arr, a little unfortunate. A rematch, though, from 2015. There's a lot of stories here. I wanted to face uh, Sidney Crosby, but this is a rematch from 2015. And if we can win, then now we've tied Malkin, Latang, and uh, Crosby, Keith, Taves and Kane will all have four Stanley Cups as well. But Steven Stamkos looking for his first Stanley Cup. The rematch from 2015, baby. A lot of good stories right here. So let's take a look at these stats. And the Mesnikov, man, what a playmaker. Even though he's listed as a two-way forward, I know how to read those advanced analytics, and I got them figured out, and I got them playing very well on that second line. So the forward is Nemesnikov, yeah, plus 10. Look at the second line, dude! So somebody go back, and I, I think I showed Jonathan Taves' his points before that. I think he had, what, five goals in that series? Five goals in uh, six games, one assist. Five goals, one assist in six games, so six points in six games. I think it was something like that. Bjorkstrand, yeah, the, sa the first line did nothing, man. Patrick Kane, he didn't have a single goal. What do you have? Two assists? Two assists in six games. They really got to come alive. Panarin did nothing. Debrinkit did nothing. Jackson Kostopoulos, man, moving up the list. Seven points. Uh, nine points, sorry. He's right behind Nick Schmaltz. Wood. Yeah, and then Yarncroc. Brought him. Look at that Yarncroc. Brought him back in. He had to sit, but brought him back in. And in four points, at uh, four games, he's got four points. Beautiful coaching right there. Unbelievable coaching. Uh, defenseman. Let's see. Bachfist, seven points. Yeah, Myers, Ekholm, Duncan Keith. Duncan Keith might be dropping off, man. He's 80 overall. This is his last year. I won't be able to even trade him now with that uh, with that contract. And Sergei Bobrovsky's numbers went back up. 9-3-1 save percentage. Beautiful fucking job, Sergei. So, boys, Chicago, I've done it. I've gotten them back in the Stanley Cup Final. There was one off here for Stan Bowman. All right, but the, the French Fry Master was able to get your team not just back to the Stanley Cup Final, but become true contenders. And we really are. We were the second best team in the NHL during the regular season. Just missed out on that President's Trophy. And look at our last 10 games, you know, 4-3-3. Three, and three, All those overtime losses. Essentially, we were a President's Trophy team. Uh, we have home ice advantage here in the Stanley Cup Final against Tampa Bay. And uh, why not? Why not, right? Why not? We could do it this year. We have a young team as well. We're getting better. Guys like Bachvis, Yokoharju, Jackson Kostopoulos, who I think is going to be the rookie of the season next year. I don't care who gets drafted. This guy, he's going to be in the 80s, and he simulates well. So I'm looking forward to this. Anything and everything, boys. Any, any friggin' uh, plan B's, plan C's, just in case we uh, drop the first two games. We drop the first, two of the first three games against Arizona, so you gotta know where to go, and I made some brilliant coaching decisions. That's right, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. That fourth line change was unbelievable. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the year three Stanley Cup Finals. Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit! I should have gone with Jose for Nandez! Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card. First inning.